So starting with this one, we notice that all of these lines are on a 30 degrees. So this kind of tells us anytime we see degrees that we're going to use the polar method. So what I want you to, to notice is that all of these lines are in some kind of form of a 30 degrees, even these horizontal and vertical lines. Now in this example, I'm going to show you two ways of creating this. The first way I'm going to do it is with the traditional polar method. And then I'm going to show you what polar tracking looks like that will speed your life up tremendously if you notice that you're doing something that have all of these consistent angles. And for this drawing, you can see that all the distances are the same. The 2x that you're seeing in front of this means that these are located in two different places. So for example, the 2x on this vertical replies to um, it's, it's telling me that it applies to this line and then this line. The 2x on this one applies to this line and this line. And the 2x on this one applies to the this line here and this one here along the top. And the other one, of course, this one and this one. That 2x is just mainly shorthand when you're going to see in drafting is that a lot of times instead of putting that dimension here, 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 and going around this whole entire drawing, it will clutter it up. So you're going to start seeing a lot of shorthand as we get more and more into this course or in the examples that you're going to see. One other thing I want you to concentrate on is looking at these angles and being able to determine them. So that's a real important feature to notice when you're using the polar method. The polar method, you can see always pointing to the right, is going to be our zero degrees, and it's going to follow a counterclockwise rotation increasing. Also, you can all put in negative values. So, for example, if I wanted to go to 330, that's also a negative 30 degrees, just like 270 is a negative 90. So, you can either put in the negative values of those numbers, if you can understand that, or you can follow the traditional method of following these angles around counterclockwise. So, for example, if I'm creating this first line here, you can see that that goes up at a distance of 30. That will follow along here. Then I will come across horizontally. That's going to follow zero. Going down, I'm going to come to the 330 degrees. I'll go up in the upward direction. That should follow 90. I'll go this direction. That's 150. Going back this direction is a horizontal, so that's 180. Coming downward in this direction is 210. And then if I want to, I can either see to close this one or I can come downward at a 270. So we're going to open up AutoCAD next and take a look at how to do this using the angle method. And like I said before, I will show you the polar tracking method that will speed this up tremendously. Okay, so here in AutoCAD, I'm going to start with the line command. And it's always important to read your command line to make sure, number one, that you're in the line command. And it's asking me to specify a first point. I can type one in, or I can simply click anywhere on my screen to start my first point. So I'll click here. And now I have the rubber band effect going on. So if I wanted to keep these lines horizontal, I can select the ortho. But in this case, we're using angles. You have the option of selecting both of them, either one. If I leave these horizontal, the type in commands or whatever I key in will override the horizontal. So it doesn't matter exactly if you have the ortho turned on or off. So now I'm just going to type in the distance first, so 1.25. And then I'm going to give it an angle. So hold down the shift button and hit the comma key or the less than symbol on your keyboard. Type in the angle that you want to use, 30. And once again, to tell AutoCAD that you want to go to the next step, you would hit the Enter button. And now, once it created my first line, I'm just going to kind of scroll into this. So I'm using my middle mouse wheel. And remember, the easiest way to use this that is that if you aim it to where you want it to go first, so for example, you can see that end point is highlighting, and then I'll scroll into it, you can see that that's kind of it's going to try to zoom and put that in the center. And then I'm just going to pan this down a little bit by holding that middle scroll wheel down. So the scroll wheel in and out is the zoom. And then holding it down is the pan. 
Next, I want to go to my next point. So the distance come first. So I want to go a distance of 1.25. I'm using that less than symbol. And I'm going to give it the angle of 0. I'll keep right on typing. 1.25. Less than symbol. 330. Followed by the enter key. Next, I know I want to go in the upward direction. And let's zoom out a little bit so you can see it actually creating the part. 1.25. I'm using the angle button. I want to go straight north. In this case, that's 90. Type in the distance first, 1.25. I'll type in the angle, 150. 1.25, angle, 180. 1.25, the angle button, 210. And like I said before, I'm at the end of this. I can easily type in the 1.25 and give it an angle of 270. But in this case, I think it's always easier to use the close function because it does two things for you. It goes back down to the start point and it exits out the command. Okay, so that's one way of creating this and that's using the traditional polar method. But if you have all these angles and they are typical or they're following roughly the same angle, it's a lot easier to use your polar tracking. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click the fly up next to it and I'm going to make sure that I have a check beside the 30, 60, 90, 120 option. Once I selected that, you can see this icon turns blue. That means that it is activated. It's going to also turn off your ortho. These two options cannot be on at the same time. So you'll notice that if I click the ortho, that one will turn off. If I select the polar tracking method, the ortho turns off. Let's start the line again, and we're going to do this one this time using the polar tracking method. So I'll start with the line, specify my first point, so I'll click here. And now you can see that as I pull out to the side here, you got these green tracking lines. These are going to click or snap when you get up to a certain angle. So you can see from here, I'm rotating up. It's tracked onto the 30 degrees. Make sure you got the green tracking lines there and type in your distance, which is 1.25. Hit the enter button. Drag out this direction. Type in 1.25. Enter. I'm going to go downward in this direction. And you can see that it's telling me that I got 30 degrees and it's measuring it from the x-axis. 1.25. Enter. I want to go straight north. You can see that I have a 90 degrees is what the preview is showing me on that command. 1.25. And this is where things will get a little bit dicier. So if I rotate up, I have the first snap. And it's going to snap here. And you can see that is giving me that angle of 150. Truly measuring from the x-axis. So 1.25. Enter. Go horizontal. 1.25, enter, and then I want to go downward in this direction, so I'm just going to come and rotate down, and you can see that it's giving me 150 degrees. Now remember, that's a negative, because if you look at the way that that angle is constructed, it's going in a clockwise rotation, so it is a 210 degrees if it was positive from that x-axis, but since it's going clockwise, it'll be 150. One. 0.25 is all you have to type in. Enter. And then use the close function. Either one of these methods are acceptable, but if you have a lot of common angles, sometimes it's a lot easier to control it with your polar tracking. If you want, you can always use the traditional method of typing in the angles, and that works really well if you can understand the angles, but I always find it quicker to use the polar tracking. So thanks for watching.